Hi all. So in the previous video, I have explained what is at input property. If I want to pass any data from the parent to child component, we are using at input decorator. Then if any value changes in the parent component and based on that change, if I have to do some functionality in the child component, how I will detect those changes. For that, I will explain in all the scenarios in this video, mainly the two scenarios we are using for the same. So for that, in the previous video, I have written a parent and child relationship. Uh, so in that app.component.html is the parent one and I am declaring that particular child element here and I am declaring a variable a parent username and I am passing that variable parent username as the name as child username in the child component and here I am uh, using at input decorator I am using that parent variable uh, uh, inside the child as child username and I am using in the HTML. So a small change I have done in the previous session is like in the app.component.html I am making the parent value as the input box in order to detect that any change in order to uh, doing some changes in the parent component. So how it is looks now is like in the parent component I have an input box and I have a value whenever this value is changing it will be reflect here but if I do, if I want to do a functionality, okay, if when I get, it has been updated, I have to call an API, I have to change this to lower case, you know, some scenarios will be there, right, while uh, you are developing some project. So, if you do any functionality after the parent at input property, parent value has been changed, how you will do that? Okay, that is the uh, question. So we have a two types. Uh, one is like using Angular life say one of the Angular life cycle hook at ng on changes. Other one is like at input setters and getters. I will explain uh, more in detail. The first one. So you can see in the child dot component every components while you are creating you can see at own init property ng on it property. This is called when a component has been created. So, what is this life cycle hooks? Life cycle hooks is nothing. When a component has been created, when the component has been destroyed, there will be a life cycle for each step from the creation until the destroy. So, this is called Angular life cycle hooks. So, one of the Angular life cycle hook is ng on it. This will be called when the component has been created. So, if you are giving a console dot log of uh, something called ng on in it, comma this dot child username, you can see. It will be called only once when the component has been created. So it will be called once only. So whenever I, a change is happening, it is not calling it again. So if I want to call any functionality, I can't do anything inside the ng on init functionality, right? Then how we will do? So Angular is providing another lifecycle hook, uh, which is ng on changes. So if you want to use ng on changes, you have to implement on changes and you have to import it in the Angular core library. So it has been imported. You can see ng on it on changes you have used it. Now you can check that whenever the input variable. So what what is ng on changes? Okay, this is this will detect and act upon the changes to the input properties value. Okay, so this will help uh, to detect all the changes happening to the at input property. So this will be called before ng on it during the initial time and after every at input value changes, it will be called again and again. So if you want to write any functionality on the change of at input property, you can uh, come here and uh, return inside the ng on changes property. Okay, so I can show you. on changes comma this dot child username
ओके सो नॉर्मली इट एक्सेप्ट वन आर्गुमेंट व्हाट द एरर इज शोइंग इज आई कैन शो यू द एरर एज वेल NG on changes is missing in type child component and incorrectly implement then types NG on changes. Okay, let me check that what it is showing. Sorry, my bad. On changes. Okay, so is the capital I have written the small letter. That's why this issue is. Okay. So, and also it accepts some argument, but it is optional. But I I will come to that particular point. So, once you refresh. first time ng on change is called at input decorator has been set then ng on it uh, means after the component child component initiation it will call and it will display the value then after changing the parent value again it will call on the ng on changes you can see here then if i remove it every time when at input decorator at input means at parent value has been changes this will be this will trigger and uh, uh, whatever functionality you need you can return inside that so this is a one method and it will accept by default it will accept uh, a property called simple changes then you can import the angular call if you can solve this changes you can you, you will be able to identify some properties you can show to you so by default uh, on on lord this symbol change will contain all the at input property and all the previous value and the new value so by default at the input property previous it will be undefined and the current value is john matthews whenever i change a value you can see at the ng on changes it will contains previous value it was matthews and i have added new s so if i if you want to do with uh, you know the changes you can use this one if you want to do this type of uh, checking so if you have a multiple and also if you have a multiple a uh, set of uh, at input decorator so if you are directly giving a console dot log every condition every at input value changes this will call so if you if you want to be more specific what you can do is like if the changes dot you can mention what uh, child username dot current value something like that any condition you can give in or uh, you can give you know is the first change so is first change is a option is there so something like that uh, you can use and also one variable called first change okay sorry so that variable also you can use so if if you want to more specific if you have a multiple input variable you can add that this type of conditions uh, otherwise at every at input changes this uh, particular ng on changes will be called okay that is a one way of doing this so if you want to do any functionality uh, for example if i want to call an endpoint once the child username has been changed you can call the http request inside the ng on changes this is a one way of doing that so do we have an another option okay so if you are not using this ng on changes it is fine we have an another option i can tell you okay so another option is at the at input decorator first you have to declare a private variable private chat user
that's only for this particular scenario we have a temporary variable that's why i'm just starting with underscore or something whatever you can uh, i'm just initializing it then at input we have a default we have a property called get and set so so what you can do is like then get what is the input property name child user name is the property name right getters So what it is return is just return this dot underscore username and set what a set returns set will have always accept a variable so you can mention that this temporary variable as the name then this dot underscore username equal to name so this is one way of doing it. then why we need to do this like if you want whatever name we are received whatever uh, name we are getting from the at input property for example child you use a name if you want to do a, some functionality for example if i if you want to do some to lower case or something lower case so you can return that type of functionality here directly instead of using ng on changes and you can use a set property to lower case and also you have a get property so set will set and whatever uh, you are uh, setting this particular variable it will return to this child username so whenever inside a component you are using this child user a child username it will return you the lowercase uh, value I can show you you can so you can see right by default it is then on changes what it will happens but you if you if you are doing a console here you can see I am doing a console dot log of get okay. I'm just showing you one thing, one problem with this get and set I can explain one by default uh, you know on the ng on changes that is calling set so and while doing an ng on changes you can see uh, the ng on changes will call only once before ng on it so here you are you can see set and get is calling only once then after ng on it again it is calling get multiple times then again it is calling you know uh, it is calling multiple times so what happens behind the scene is like for each and every it is not related to at input decorator okay for every angular uh, have a default behavior of some changes so whenever a change angular is thinking this is a change it is not about a variable okay angular thinking this is a change then each change it will call this at input getters and setters so you should not call if, if you have a variable from the parent element using at input decorator and after that variable has been changed if you want to do a api call or something like that i won't prefer get and set for that purpose you can use 
NG on changes. If it is something a simple, you know, two lower case or something like a variable assignment, if something you have to set like that is small logic other than uh, the external API calls, you can use get and set. But uh, more, I will prefer NG on changes because it is triggering multiple times. Uh, so you can avoid this. We have a one method. We have an option to avoid this as well. So uh, this is the uh, you know default behavior of this particular change strategy. So if the change strategy here, you can uh, change. Uh, the, you can one more thing you can see when I change also, it have been called multiple times uh, other than the expected behavior. So we have a on push strategy is there on push change strategy you can search for it i'm just looking for the code uh, which i want to copy so I think uh, you can go through if you really you know uh, need to know more about this particular uh, so by default the getters and setters is taking the uh, default uh, change behavior strategy so if you want uh, I forgot that particular uh, it is really not required yeah this is the one so change detection so if you are using getters and setters uh, if you want to call this uh, trigger at input and at decorator only at the uh, you know uh, sorry getters and setters uh, changes needs to be re reflected only on the uh, at input value or some type of you have to use on push uh, strategy by default it will be a default strategy that's why it is calling uh, angular uh, you know considering many other changes as changes so every time it will call so if you want to restrict that type of uh, things you can give on push then you can see get set it has been reduced right so here set get only the correct amount of times only it will be called so this is all about two ways of doing uh, the detection at input change detection in the child component uh, one way is uh, ng on changes the other one is like getters and setter for small changes better uh, if you want you can go with the getters and setters if it is required uh, 